Good morning. Well, I'm feeling under pressure, under pressure to grow my tomatoes. There's one or two of them that are looking ready to be put into bigger pots and get underway. It's still early. Temperatures went down to 1.4 here in the last couple of nights. So there's still some risk around that. But I think it's important to get going with tomatoes. There's nothing like the pressure of seeing other people's tomatoes growing well on YouTube. And the climate up here, it can be a bit more challenging. But I think I'm gonna take some risks. That's what gardening's about. So I'm gonna have a sort out, move things around, make some space and see if I can get some underway. Well, I'm pretty pleased with that. I've managed to get that last tray off of this bed. So I'll be able to use that last bit of space. These are the tomatoes that I'm going to plant. They're small, but they've hardened up quite nicely. So I think they've got a good chance. And that's enabled me to put down six pots. They're too close together in reality, but that isn't going to be a problem while they're starting to grow. And then I can spread them out more once I get seedlings out. And there's all the seedlings gathered together. These are the ones that can't really move on just yet. There's some broccoli that can, but they're coming together nicely. And I've brought out some more tomatoes to harden off. And yeah, that should give me a fighting chance to get some early tomatoes going. And I'm looking forward to that. So this is the first time I've used these halos but I think they look like a good plan. The slow release watering at the bottom into the well and covering the surface of the soil seems like a good combination to me. It will prevent evaporation and it will give a slow release of moisture throughout the day. So I think that's a good plan. Um, these three holes take canes and I'm going to use that method this time and see if we can train the tomatoes up the canes. Now the real trick of course is to make sure you keep pricking out the side shoots and that way you keep a nice strong sturdy main stem and that for me is probably the aim. Taking away the lower leaves as the plant becomes more mature is also important. Um, but we're going to try these and we're just going to fill this pot with compost. Now normally I use a bigger pot than this, but space is quite short. So in the interest of growing a few more plants, I'm going to try and keep the space that's taken by the number of plants to a minimum by using a small pot. So I'm just going to see how that works. I think I could probably get a few more inches of compost in there just below the surface I reckon. Yeah I think that's about right. So having got the halo on top of the soil. It's then a case of planting the tomato just below the surface. So I'm going to add more compost into the funnel until I get it to about the right point. And then I'm going to take the plant out of the pot pop it in and then feed compost around it. I'll be hooking out all that compost that I've spilt in a minute, I'm sure. I 
Now, tomatoes can be planted quite deeply because their stems will root. So having got it nicely positioned, I'm now just going to fill further up the stem. And cover the root ball and some of the stem at the same time. Now we leave ourselves a gap to water because the strategy with this is to water the center for the first couple of weeks and then to start watering into the well. So if we push that down fairly firmly, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to lift it get rid of all that soil I dropped and then pop it back. Wow, that worked. Definitely a good strategy. And then we're going to add the canes. So the canes use a three cane holder at the top, uh, which comes as part of the halo package. I'm just going to twist off these plastic pieces of holder and that leaves a nice clean finish and I'm going to just pop those canes into the holes provided and push them down into the soil. Yeah, I think probably I needed to rearrange that Try again. There we are. And that's one tomato ready for growing on. I'll give him a good water and carry on with the rest. So my next plan for this area is to extend this path. The challenge here is always getting down to the chickens in midwinter when it's wet and dark and slippery. So I'm going to extend this path all the way down and across to the chickens. So that's the general layout. I'm going to have to take some soil out and with these on the gradient, I'm going to have to step them down. And then over to the right here, I think I'm going to end up creating a bed at some time and I'm certainly going to bring the old coop that I made up and put that down in this area in the meantime. The area just in front of the coop that I intended for flowers, I'm thinking I'm going to grow my sunflowers there as I've clearly got a good structure that I can attach them to if it gets windy. So that's a bit of a plan forming in my head. So I'm going to get on and cut this path in and see if I can get those relatively level. At this time of year, you can see the wear patches on the ground and it's always useful to clock those and see whether you can overcome them for the winter. 
for sure in the winter they're the marks where you're going to slip and fall and I've got quite a lot of pavers that I've been using for various things not great use and it makes sense to me to have them where we can protect ourselves during the winter months when it's wet and cold so I know it's planning ahead and we haven't even started the season uh, but I think it's prudent to do that so I've gathered together nine pavers and the plan is to put them in front of the shed where the wear is the worst. I've also got a couple of hot spots leading to the path that goes down to the chickens. So if I can find something that will do the job, I'll probably put something in there as well. I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. There was two slabs there. Bit of a luxury really, because you only need one to step down or to wheel the barrow over there. So I've borrowed one from there and the grass will come back in no time. Now these are the nine that I've gathered together and you can see that's the spot where we just at risk during the winter months. So it's a good chance to level this out and get a decent area to enter the shed from. And then from the shed we tend to go around here and you can see once again this little spot here is probably a high risk. So if we can find something to do the job, then that would be great. So it's pretty much the same approach as I took with the path. It's got to be leveled and dug into the ground. On an allotment, you don't need sand and cement. They bed down reasonably well. And if there's any movement, you can always pull them back up and change the levels again. So we'll get planning. After some jigging around yesterday, I found these extra flags or borrowed them from various places around the allotment just to complete this path. I think I'm going to use those bricks uh, just to make the first one a step and then settle those in as level as I can. And the path's coming together now. I needed just a couple of extras to get up to the small run and I'll set those in and everything else now is pretty much in place so hopefully i can get those done today and that'll be an end to path building which will be a good place to be Now I said that I'd finish with the path making, but I've got a bit of path repairing to do. This is a communal path, and there's one or two more mature ladies who use it, and I just need to make sure it's safe. It's certainly seen better days, so I think it's time to repair.
Well, that's got all the nets distributed across the beds. I've got enough nets to do all four of these five meter long beds, but invariably I don't use them. But I'm never tempted to cut them down because sure as eggs are eggs, one year I'm gonna want them. So what I think I'm gonna do, I created the new sprout hoop area. I think I'm just gonna use a five meter uh, net and just spread it over, roll it up at the ends if I need to. Uh, that'll be one solution. Or maybe the five meter debris netting will do the job. We'll see when we get to the end. Now I need to redistribute these hoops. Um, I tend to use five of these hoops on a five meter length and that'll leave me four on each of the smaller beds. I think one bed might be short by one hoop and that's not a problem. So that's my next step, hoop time. If you haven't seen my earlier video about these hoops, I made these myself uh, from a roll of eight millimeter galvanized wire. At the time it was available on Amazon, uh, but in recent times when I've looked, it's no longer there. Uh, so if you can find a supplier of eight mil galvanized wire and then cut it to about 2.4 meters, um, it is obviously already coiled and therefore it's sort of sprung perfectly for the job. All you need to do is straighten the ends a little bit for pushing into the ground, but they never rust and they're perfect for the job. Um, I'm surprised that there isn't a supplier that's making these for this purpose, but I know the last time I looked, I couldn't find any. So if you have any luck, uh, you know where to get any of these, put it in the comments below and I'm sure people will appreciate it. So now I'm gonna set these nets up just so that they're in place and then I can remove them or fold them down when I want to plant. And that's my next step. So that was a pretty strenuous job. It gets you on the knees if I'm fair, up and down. It's a bit like doing squat thrusts in the gym, but I got where I wanted to get, made a few decisions on the hoof, but that's fine too. So I've left the net off this one at the moment. A, I've not got any rocks or bricks to keep it down and it's leaks that are going in there. So I'm in no great hurry. In this one, we're gonna be ending up putting parsnips. So they'll be fine once they get going, but it's just keeping the cats off them at the beginning. So that'll stand us in good stead for that. I've got more broad beans to go in there, so no problem with netting there. So all the smaller beds are netted and the lower crops will be in these lower hoops. And I'm gonna put celeriac in the big bed over there with the high hoops. I just wanna really go to town with celeriac this year and see if I can get some really good quality roots. And this debris netting net over this bed is a bit of a compromise. It's just a bit short of ceiling at the bottom. And I'm gonna to have to fiddle with that, but I'm not gonna spend oodles of time on it until I get to planting that out. So it's just good to know that I've got it in place. And the whole motivation for sorting out all these nets was to see whether I had a net to cover this bed. And sure enough, I have. So I'm pleased that I've got there. All in all, a good afternoon's work. This sort of raising the patio up on earth, as long as it's reasonably solid and this was turf, it works reasonably well. But this is probably getting to the extreme of how much you can do this, especially in the winter when it gets damp. 
So along this particular stretch, which is quite high, I've cut down this plank and I'm going to slot it in the front and to serve as a bit of an additional support. It's time to kill some carrots. So this is always a bit of a risky moment. Don't want to cut the wrong ones. Trying to pick your best. So why do we do it? Well, we don't want carrots competing for space. If we can remain with just one carrot in each location, that's going to give us a bigger, longer carrot. And the risks, of course, is that if you lose that one carrot, you're a bit stuffed, especially if you thin them all and you haven't got a replacement. So it's a risk, but it's got to be done. What I might do is where I've got a carrot that's reasonably far apart, perhaps like this one over here, I might just leave one in case I lose a carrot. We've got one on its own here, so nothing to do there. And looking at general size, they're all fairly similar, so it's not going to be too difficult. Oh well, can't put it off any longer. Time to get going. So I've left myself a single carrot, with the exception of just one over there. I notice when I'm doing this, there's a little bit of green fly on some of these carrots. So it's just raised the priority of me making some organic insecticide from rhubarb. I'm going to take a few sticks of rhubarb from a neighbour who doesn't eat it but grows it and has offered me to take some if I would like some. And I'm going to use the leaves for the rhubarb insecticide. I'm going to eat the rhubarb sticks. In fact, I think I'm going to make a cake with it. Good times. This is my neighbouring plot. And it's a lady called Lynn. She's a fantastic gardener. And she dedicates so much time she really enjoys growing flowers, as you can see, and the plot looks beautiful. And she also grows a few currants, red currants, and these marvellous red gooseberries, which I've taken some cuttings of and planted, and hopefully will come through. Lynn also has this rhubarb, and she's offered me to take some because she doesn't need a lot of it. And this is what I'm going to make the insecticide from, and a cake. <clears throat> now that's what you call rhubarb. And that'll be plenty. Well, we've got a huge temperature swing coming. On Friday, 25 degrees. On Sunday, a possible frost. It's May the 6th and all the plans are changing. Gardeners are gamblers and now we're gonna be called out. So I had plans to do some planting out, but they've all gone on hold. And now I'm thinking, how much fleece have I got? And how can I cover everything up 
if that frost comes, which it looks likely. So the Arctic temperatures are coming down the UK and will hit Wales on Sunday. And I need to be prepared. So I need to fill in my time now with something more productive. I'm gonna start that new bed. I'm gonna put that piece of wood on the paving that I've been doing. And it looks like I've got to mow again. So I'm gonna mow first and think about strimming on another day. If you haven't got plans yet for covering up your UK based plants and seedlings, then I think you should start thinking about it and perhaps checking out if you've got some fleece. Good luck everybody. So this is the piece of wood that I planned to put in here. And when I got to the point where I was ready to slot it in, I found that there was a brick that underpins this shed and it comes out into the space that I need to use. So I had some choices, I either chop away at that brick or I try and get it out. And I thought none of those things are a good idea because I don't want to stop the integrity of the support for the shed. So I took the plate back and chopped out a piece so that I can fit it in. So now's the moment of truth. Looking good. So I think at the moment, all I'm gonna do is push back the one paving and hold it in place. And we've got a nice flush fit. And it means that when anybody steps on the edge, they're actually stepping on the wood and that should keep the integrity of it for a while longer. Do hope you enjoyed the video today if you did click the subscribe button click the like button and if you want updates from me each time i upload a video click the bell and select all I do hope you have a great day